Hey there, Chris here from IELTS Advantage and this is Anna. Anna recently got an amazing 8.5 in her writing. So if you consider that the average score worldwide for writing is just 5.5 and that most students struggle to even get a 7, an 8.5 is a pretty amazing thing. So. I had an idea, instead of doing a normal success story video where we talked to Anna one-on-one -on -one and talked about how she did it, I decided to do things a little bit differently and do a one-on-one -on -one interview with her, but get Anna to write out her essay, the real question that she got on the test and write it nearly exactly the same as she did in the real test and then go through it sentence by sentence and talk about what she did, why she did that and show you guys what an 8.5 essay looks like. And we're also going to talk about how she prepared for the test, how she generated ideas, what her practice routine was, all of the things that you guys need to know to help you improve your scores. So without further ado, I'll introduce you to Anna. Okay, Anna, so when you saw this question for the first time. Some think that only those people who have worked for a company for many years should be promoted to a higher position. Do you agree? What was going through your head? What were you thinking when you, when you saw this one? Well, first of all, I was over the moon because uh, that very topic was uh, one of my favorite uh, because I immediately I realized that I did have a lot of good vocabulary mm -hmm. and quite clear ideas. Because it's not something, you know, uh, vague or something too complicated. Everyone ha can have uh, good ideas uh, mm -hmm. about this. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and then I followed your strategy, which you usually mention uh, in, uh, during your course, which is uh, not to support your real viewpoints, your real, you know, perception of life. Uh, because initially, I don't think so. <laughs> I do think that senior employees actually uh, actually should be promoted a bit, uh, you know, a bit more. But uh, I decided to stick to the ideas which I can clearly and easily understand without spending a lot of time on just uh, going through a lot of ideas and thinking how to put it together. So mm -hmm. it was, wasn't my real opinion, mm -hmm. but it was something which is easy to describe. Yeah, whatever makes it easy for you to write is, is the best choice. So you might totally disagree with that in real life, but if you agree with it, but you, and you can easily write about it because you have good ideas, good examples, good vocabulary, just use that. It's, it, the examiner is not testing your personal opinion. They're testing whether you can write effectively in English. Mm -hmm. So, so that's And right. also um, a good uh, life hack, so the so-called life hack, also from your course is to stick to simple ideas. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. they weren't so complicated. Yeah. They were obvious. Mm -hmm. Because uh, I do know from your course that uh, we should uh, show our uh, ability to explain, to deliver our thoughts, mm -hmm. not yeah. our scientific knowledge. Exactly. That's it's not a no knowledge yeah. test. And they're not testing how complex your ideas are. They're testing whether you can think of ideas that actually answer the question, which, which is normally the simplest ideas that come to mind. Mm -hmm. um, there's, a, there's a game show in the UK and the US called Family Fortunes, and they ask a question and they say, we asked 100 people this question, and the, the game show contestants have to guess the most popular answer. Normally, the most popular answers or the most straightforward or obvious answers are the easiest to use. Would you mm -hmm. agree with that? Yeah, totally. Excellent, excellent. So how did you uh, generate ideas? Was there any technique or did they just pop into your head because it was a very obvious question or? So I followed the strategy to stick to, one, uh, to a one-sided opinion. Mm -hmm. So first I chose my uh, side, mm -hmm. which was against senior employees. Mm -hmm. And then I just immediately thought about two main points, which are d easy to describe. That's it. Exactly. There, there, there's a lot of strategies, like we have the coffee shop method on the course. A lot of teachers teach brainstorming. But often, sometimes you will get a question where the answers or the ideas just pop into your head. They're very obvious and you don't need to go through that whole technique and strategy. They're helpful if you can't immediately think of what is going on, but if they pop into your head, just, just use those. 
Yeah, and also, also I think it's important uh, to you know to write a lot of essays uh, mm -hmm. to practice uh, this very skill. Mm -hmm. because before that uh, like one year ago it took me much more time just to think of ideas mm -hmm. i was really stuck looking at uh, some essay topics yeah. but just practicing this skill is is um, it may be developed it's mm -hmm. not something you know unique yeah it's like if you wanted to learn how to play football or learn how to improve your cooking or singing you have to do those things and mm -hmm. writing is a doing thing often people will ask me well why is my listening and reading very high but my writing is very low and i said well you've been listening to english your whole life but mm -hmm. you never write in english and so and even smaller things like analyzing the question idea generation planning these are all skills that you should mm -hmm. practice before before you, you so that's great advice so did you do any planning or did you just think of the ideas and immediately start writing? Yeah, because of uh, that uh, practice, <laughs> in quite intense practice, I didn't have to write down my ideas. It was a computer delivered test. Mm -hmm. So I, I did have a list of uh, a, a sheet of paper mm -hmm. to write down my ideas, but I didn't need it because they just were in my head and in fact i put it uh, in my introduction so they were in front of me exactly exactly so you had the structure already in your head and because you had done it so many times you could just immediately start yeah, yeah. and we'll talk about that in a second where we teach you to kind of plan your essay in your introduction and your introduction is a mini a mini plan yeah excellent so let's get into it and let's have a look at your first sentence Mm -hmm. So your first sentence, there is an, an opinion that primarily staff members who have dedicated many years to working for a particular company should be given executive positions in a company. So what the examiner is looking for there is your ability to paraphrase. And they'll be looking at two things. Number one, does that sentence mean the same as the sentence in the question, which it does, and is your grammar and vocabulary accurate and you have uh, and have you varied your vocabulary enough and you did that perfectly and you did an excellent job so the examiner is looking at that and immediately they know you know how to paraphrase you've understood the question your grammar is good your vocabulary is good so that mm -hmm. that would give the immediately give the examiner an indication that you know what you're doing so the, the second sentence starts off with i disagree with this viewpoint so what that does is it indicates to the examiner, here is my opinion. My opinion is, ex I know exactly what I want to talk about. My opinion is extremely clear from the beginning. That helps the examiner understand the viewpoint, but also helps Anna, when she's writing, stick to that viewpoint and make sure the rest of the essay links up with that and is nice and coherent and cohesive. Now, the second thing that she has done in that sentence is she has listed her two main ideas, her two reasons. In as much as younger workers may have more skills and if not provided with an opportunity for a promotion, they will become demotivated. So Ada has put two main ideas here. Number one, younger workers have more skill. And number two, if they're not promoted, they'll become demotivated. So it's very clear to the examiner, here's my opinion, and here are the two reasons to support my opinion. And as Anna said before, that acts as a, a mini plan for the rest of Anna's essay. Because the first main idea, lack of skill, she's going to use that in main body paragraph one. And then the second main idea, demotivated she's going to use that as her second main idea in her second main body paragraph so is that is that what you did is that what you were thinking about while you were writing it anna sorry yeah, for exactly. talking so much it's your video but <laughs> it's our video <laughs> yeah yeah that was exactly my uh, my approach excellent excellent and did you proofread the introduction or did you just immediately then go into the the, the um yeah it was a computer-based test so that's okay. why I used to do a lot of spelling mistakes because of my typing. Uh -huh. When I write by hand, I don't do so many uh -huh. uh, spelling mistakes, but 
when it comes to typing, I do have to check uh, each sentence right on the spot. It helps me because uh, maybe uh, by the end of the test, I, I may not have any time to check it. So exactly. that's why I, I do it uh, right after finishing a paragraph. Yeah, I would recommend at the end of every sentence, check your, check your work. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. At the end of every paragraph, check your work. And then when you have time at the end, check your work again. So you check three, three times. So that would be mm -hmm. good. So let's move on to the first main body paragraph. And what we can see here is in the very first sentence, this is Anna's topic sentence. And what the topic sentence does is it tells the examiner this is the main idea of this paragraph. This is the main thing that I want to talk about. So she says, although senior employees have proved to be reliable and loyal, more often than not, it is novices who have a wider cluster of actual skills. So a wider cluster of actual skills that matches up with the main point that she listed in her introduction, which is younger workers may have more skills. So she's taken the main idea from her introduction and put it into her topic sentence, which is exactly what we teach on the course, because it makes everything very, very clear to the examiner and easy for Anna to write about in her main body paragraph and makes everything coherent and cohesive. Would you agree with that, Anna? Yeah, totally. And uh, I also decided to mention that I understand the opposite viewpoint, which is uh, about senior employees who are reliable and loyal, mm -hmm. because it didn't take a lot of time and space. Mm -hmm. And it was clear. That's why I thought it would be a good emphasis, mm -hmm. like, uh, to, like making a contrast. Yeah. It, I mean, it, it, it's fine to do that. Uh, what I would, if anyone's watching this, what I would avoid doing is trying to do that in a very elaborate way. Yeah. I, at the end of the paragraph, trying to show the opposite view or maybe have like five or six main body paragraphs mm -hmm. so that you, in a, an agree or disagree question, you can show a balanced view, but it's very easy to mess it up. So what we teach our students is just make it really simple by agreeing with one side, either agree or disagree, and just sticking to that side. Anna briefly talked about the other side, but you don't need to do that. It's not, it's not essential. Yeah, uh, it, but, was my, it was my uh, experiments with the language to yeah, make and, and it. It helped you with a complex sentence as well. So that, that was great. Mm -hmm. All right. The other thing that Anna did very, very well uh, was she didn't just stop there and list one idea, she then fully developed that idea by explaining her reasoning behind that. A good way to think about this is um, someone saying to you, well, I understand that idea, but how does it actually answer the question? Give me reasons, give me justification. And she did that very well here. This is because young specialists exert their full effort in mastering their hard and soft skills in order to meet the requirements of today's highly competitive job market. So she's explained why skills or wide range of skills are useful for the job market and then continues with that. Therefore, having been promoted, such workers may bring innovation and help to better incorporate the latest technological advances into business processes, which, which is irreplaceable for every company to flourish. So it explains why companies would want that, how young people with lots of skills would benefit a company, and that helps to really develop her answer. What were you thinking when you were writing that bit? Frankly speaking, I was thinking how to put uh, together everything I know about this topic <laughs> and to a bit show off my vocabulary. But then I realized that actually I don't need to, uh, I don't need to show it off mm -hmm. because I already had a lot of good uh, expressions and they come out of me naturally. Mm -hmm. So I just uh, gave up that idea and move on explaining. Um, and then I, I, I thought, okay, I need an example here, but I don't have time. I decided to write this essay, uh, um, at the end of the test because, uh, my weak side was uh, the first part. So I started off with it mm -hmm. and then I had only 37 minutes for the essay. Mm -hmm. That's why I just decided to leave it here, uh, to leave it there like, uh, like this. 
And if I had time, I would uh, come back and then add an example, but I didn't have time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I've added an example in here. This is the only amendment, uh, only change that I have made to Anna's essay. I've put it in in yellow here. I put in, for example, the average age of a new hire at Facebook is only 23 for this very purpose. Uh, so Anna didn't add in an example because she was running out of time. And I think that's a, that's a really good point to make that sometimes you have to be a little bit strategic with your timing. So what happens with a lot of people is they, they think I have to put an example in and they can't think of an example and then they waste five minutes or 10 minutes or they add an example in. They all, people often do that with vocabulary as well, especially when paraphrasing, they're like, how do I change this word? And they waste a lot of time. So Anna had already developed her main body paragraph sufficiently. An example would have improve things and i've added that in just to show how someone could add a very very short example that would take just 30 seconds or one minute to write but i think if anna had have added in a good example it would have even brought it up to a nine that's one of the reasons why i think it is at an 8.5 instead of a nine but 8.5 is pretty good for writing anyway anna so i don't think you should be too hard on yourself is it <laughs> yeah yeah i also thought that in fact i had a quite explicit and well-developed explanation that's she did. why it might have worked as an example, so I decided to move on yeah. and just yeah. to finish the essay. I mean, for, for anybody watching, definitely do try and put a, a good example into each main body paragraph. Um, but in real life, you know, in, in the real, under real exam conditions, often things can go wrong. You might, leave, you know, have to repeat a word sometimes or leave out an example or something like that. Try and make it as perfect as you can um, and follow follow the system that, that we're giving you but sometimes you have to uh, make a trade-off you know mm -hmm. you, can't, you can't do everything perfectly mm -hmm. so let's move on to your second main body paragraph um, and people see a big thing in red here which Anna added in but we'll talk about that in a second but what Anna has done here in her, her topic sentence Yet another reason why less experienced staff members should have even, even chances for a promotion is that otherwise they will not be motivated to do their best. Again, so she has taken demotivated. Her, her main uh, idea from her introduction and she has added that into her topic sentence and we've already talked about why that is a good idea so we can move on. Explanation. Knowing that, however hard they try, they still will not be given a higher position in a company, young employees are likely to grow reluctant to go the extra mile, which may negatively affect the company's revenue and curb its development. So a good way to think about ex, um, explanations is, imagine somebody saying, well, so what? Well, what does that mean? So they'll not be motivated, so what? So I used to have an English teacher in my uh, English when I was a uh, high school and he would walk past us and look over our shoulders when we were writing essays and he would point and say so what and what he was trying to get us to do was elaborate and, and give reasons where rather than just state our opinion give reasons for our opinion and I think Anna did that very very well there did you use that little trick for, for writing explanations? Yeah, yeah. And uh, were it not for your course, I wouldn't uh, do it at all because I wasn't like that. I thought initially I thought, oh my gosh, one sentence is enough. Why mm. should I tr uh, write more? Mm -hmm. But when I sent uh, like 10 or 12 essays for correction, <laughs> uh, then I realized, yeah, I have to elaborate my ideas. <laughs> yeah, I think it's, it's the difference between speaking and writing. When you're speaking to someone, they can ask you follow-up questions. They can say, what do you mean? Or so what? Or can you tell me more? But when you're writing something, the person reading that doesn't have the chance to ask you follow-up questions. So you have mm -hmm. to leave everything on the page and kind of anticipate follow-up questions that they might have. One of the great things about uh, your essay is a, a, an excellent example here in the second main body paragraph to illustrate a prominent IT entrepreneur, Pavel Durov. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that 
correctly, but I'm <laughs> sorry if I'm mispronouncing it, had to leave his first workplace since despite his outstanding abilities, he was not rewarded with a leading role. As a result, he has successfully set up his own business while his employer lost his company due to a lack of highly qualified workers. So is that is that a real example that you you read about in no, a newspaper or a magazine no. or something? I know I'm not so rounded. <laughs> <laughs> I just uh, came across Pavel Durov's uh, page on Instagram, mm -hmm. and I do know that he's a prominent IT specialist, and mm -hmm. he's one of the most successful entrepreneurs in the world. Uh, but I really don't know about his uh, working background, about his story. Yeah, it was just made up for the uh, just uh, to show the example. That's yeah. it. That's a, that's a really good point because sometimes you'll be able to think of a, a real example that is 100% true. Sometimes you won't be able to think of a real example. And in that situation, you can make up an example um, as long as the example makes sense and it fits the question. And it's not like some people write 99% of, <laughs> you know, they, are, they make up some crazy statistic, but yours was false, but it you did a very good job of exemplifying that point. Um, so it's fine to make up examples as long as they make sense. Yeah, so, in fact, it was the most difficult part uh, in uh, the writing practice mm -hmm. because uh, it was really hard for me to come up with ideas. Mm -hmm. With I'm examples? Not, uh, yeah, for ideas, for examples. I, mm -hmm. I'm no good at all in making up things. So <laughs> I... I I did a lot to to master this skill. And for anybody watching this who's, who feels the same way as, as Anna does, a really great way of doing this is to go on to like the BBC News or the Guardian or some, some good news source. And you will find technology news, uh, the environment news, education news, health news. And those are the common topics that come up again and again and again for writing task two. So if you just read one newspaper article a day for you know two or three months while you're preparing, you'll get lots of ideas and lots of examples. Um, mm -hmm. And it'll help with vocabulary and everything. It takes you know 10 minutes a day, 20 minutes a day, but can make a huge, huge difference mm -hmm. to, mm -hmm. to your overall score. So let's finish off. Uh, well, before we get into the conclusion, uh, Anna left in a spelling mistake. Um, so you've put this in red. Entrepreneur. Entrepreneur is a difficult word to spell. Most native English speakers mess it up as well. But it was great that Anna left that in to show that she made a small mistake because a lot of people think that band 8.5 or band 9 Anna got 8.5, which means that she got a band 9 in at least two of the criteria. Um, and to get a band 9, you can make small grammar mistakes. You can make small slips. Not many of them, and they're just slips. Same with vocabulary. You can make a slight spelling mistake here or there. You should try and minimize those as much as possible. But many people watching this, even when I post uh, sample essays, someone will see one comma out of place and oh, you made a mistake, that's terrible. It's like this, everyone's human. You know, you're, you're writing under exam conditions. Try and minimize your mistakes as much as possible. But even band nine students make little slips and it even says that in the marking criteria. So you're not looking, uh, for most students, I wouldn't focus on the small details as much as, focusing on getting the big things correct. Like, for example, paraphrasing, your idea being clear throughout, your structure looking good, clear topic sentences, clear explanations, good examples, good conclusions. The big things are the things that really matter. Not things like a lot of people focus on, oh, you use one personal pronoun, or you misspelled one word, you must be a band five. It's like, no, that's not realistic. and That's not how the examiners think about it. Mm -hmm. By the way, what do you yeah. think about uh, the the viewpoint? I've heard it uh, a couple of times that uh, such there are such things like uh, the so-called native speaker mistakes, mm -hmm. and they actually don't lower your score as much as other types of mistakes do. Can you give you... me an example? I don't. I don't really know what you mean by like native uh, English like native speakers usually mess up less and fewer. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 
Yeah. So if, if you uh, do this in your essay, uh, it, and it, this is just one out of, uh, or only one, or you have only two mistakes throughout yeah. the whole essay, it won't affect your score that much because even native speakers uh, yeah. do this. I mean, if and you listen to native, if you go and live in London or New York or Sydney and you listen to how native English speakers talk, they make little grammar mistakes a lot, uh, countable, uncountable nouns, for example, or verb subject agreement. Um, and they, but they don't make them that often. And that is what is referred to in the marking criteria as a slip, an occasional slip. Mm -hmm. So it wouldn't be like a massive mistake, like getting a, a tense wrong or, or you know, reg or, or a systematic mistake, which is, you make a mistake every time you use that grammar point, you make that mistake. Articles or prepositions is a very good example of that. So somebody who has a big problem with articles, especially Russian speakers, um, every article is wrong. That would be a systematic error. Mm -hmm. And that would lead to a band six because it, it, it just shows that your grammar is not up to the level it needs to be. But if you got one article wrong in your whole essay, that's no big deal. That's just mm -hmm. a slip. So mm -hmm. yeah, you, that's a very good point. It's a very good point. I do live lessons all the time and I make little slips all the time. <laughs> you know, no, <laughs> nobody's perfect. Even, mm -hmm. even in class, I'd be writing on the board and talking at the same time and I'd make a little mistake and some students would say, Oh, you know, nothing teacher. It's like, no, I'm, uh. I'm human. <laughs> you know, I'm a human being. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's a good point. Um, so uh, your conclusion what we're looking for in the conclusion is the examiner's looking for no new ideas. They don't want to see new ideas or, or anything that hasn't been talked about in the, in the rest of the essay. The examiner is looking for a clear opinion. Again, your opinion must be clear throughout the essay, in your introduction, in your main body, in your conclusion. So Anna did that in her conclusion. And a summary of her main points. So taking the same two ideas from the introduction, and the same two ideas from the main body and stating them again in the conclusion. And a, a lot of people have a problem with this. Every time I teach this, people will say, well, how could you're repeating ideas? Like, well, that's what a conclusion is. A conclusion is, this is what I just talked about. This is a summary of what I just talked about. And that will improve your coherence and cohesion because everything links together and is very, very clear. And how you do that is, you need to improve your vocabulary because you can only do that if you have a wide ranging vocabulary and you can vary the language. You should avoid repeating the same word again and again and again and again. Although if that happens, it's not a, as big of a deal as people think, but you can repeat the same ideas in your introduction, main body paragraph and your conclusion. So is that what you were thinking about? You're thinking about paraphrasing whenever you got to your conclusion? Yeah, yeah, I just, uh, I used to look at my introduction just to remind myself of my, of my own ideas. Mm -hmm. And then I decided to put that concession, which I did in the first body paragraph, mm -hmm. just to stick to, you know, one, uh, one rule. Mm -hmm. If I made it once, so I decided to repeat it to just to be on the safe side. Mm -hmm. I know I um, could uh, avoid it, but I decided it uh, wouldn't uh, damage my score. So I did it, yeah. Excellent, excellent. So there's two more things I want to talk about before we finish, talk about why this is such a good essay and why it's at such a high level. The first one is grammar. So the number one thing you're looking for uh, to get a band eight, to get a band nine, is not so much range, although that's important, it's accuracy. The avoidance of making lots of mistakes. So Anna has mostly, nearly all uh, error-free sentences. And that is what the examiner is looking for. They're looking for lots and lots of sentences with no grammatical errors in them whatsoever. Also, Anna has used a range of simple and complex sentences. She doesn't Every sentence does not need to be complex, but most of her sentences are complex and a range of different grammar structures. But what, what is very impressive about Anna's work is you can tell that she hasn't tried to show off her grammar. She's tried to answer the question clearly. And as a result of doing that, she has naturally used 
a range of structures, complex sentences, and kept her, her grammar extremely accurate. One of the things that a lot of people say about band nine, band 8.5 essays is, oh, it looks very simple. How can it be such a high, a high band? It's not about showing off and using complicated language. It's about answering the question clearly. Is that what you tried to focus on, Anna? Yeah, and I, during the exam, I realized that uh, I, uh, all the time I spent on mastering my grammar actually helped me mm -hmm. because uh, I practiced uh, inversions a lot. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but I, of course, I didn't use them all the time. Mm -hmm. And during this essay, this inversion, like knowing that however hard they try or it is novices who, Mm -hmm. uh, they just came up naturally, so yeah. I wasn't thinking, oh, now there should be an inversion. Yeah, or some people think, I, will, I need to write an inversion here, and then a passive sentence, and then a conditional, and then, you know, and they, they imagine trying to write a normal email like that. You know, instead of just writing an email to your boss or someone, you're like, I'm going to try and use the future tense and the past tense mm -hmm. and the progressive mm -hmm. tense. And it's just very confusing and, and difficult to do. Instead, just answer the question, focus on accuracy, and the rest will take care of itself. Yeah, and I also practiced, uh, by, practiced a lot by forcing to use this complex grammar, but mm -hmm. out of my essays, just in my um, writing practice at mm -hmm. home, mm -hmm. and just my... Uh, my uh, pr essays which i didn't send for for um, for an assessment so yeah i did force myself uh, before the exam a lot mm -hmm. but during the exam i avoided this yeah that's what i suggest with grammar and vocabulary during your preparations take chances push yourself out of your comfort zone try and get better but on exam day play it safe uh, a good analogy is when they send astronauts up into space. They try and break everything before they go when it's safe on Earth. But when they're up in the space station, they take no chances and, <laughs> and they, they play it very, very safe, mm -hmm. um, which is a good, a good way to think about, about essay writing as well. So finally, again, we'll talk about vocabulary. Again, when people look at a band eight or a band nine essay, they often say, oh, it's not good because they, they Vocabulary is simple, but then what I do with that is I sh highlight all the good vocabulary and then they go, oh, actually it is very good. So if we he look here, staff members dedicated many years to working for a particular company, executive positions, younger workers provided with an opportunity for a promotion, demotivated, senior employees, reliable and loyal, novices, and it just goes on and on and on and on. And the, the, the two things that are very impressive about Anna's vocabulary, number one, it's extremely accurate, which is what you're trying to do. You're not trying to use big, complicated words that are wrong. You're trying to use words that help you answer the question that are correct. The second thing is, she has an extremely wide ranging vocabulary because she's using so many topic specific words, words that you only really use to talk about this specific topic, such as staff members, executive position, younger workers, uh, reliable and loyal, senior employees, hard and soft skills, meet the requirements, highly competitive job market, bring innovation business processes, irreplaceable, flourish, you don't use those words to talk about the weather or to talk about what you did last weekend. And what that demonstrates to the examiner is, if this person can talk about this topic with such a wide ranging vocabulary and accurate vocabulary, it's a good indication that they can do that for any topic. So sometimes you might get lucky and like, for example, if you're a doctor, you might get a health question. If you're a teacher, you might get an education question. But it is a very good indication if you can use those topic-specific words that you have a wide-ranging vocabulary. And did, did you work on your vocabulary before the test for a long time? Or what did you yeah, do to yeah. try, and, try and help you in that area? Uh, it was uh, uh, a lot of um, effort from, from my side. I, I studied every day, 
Mm-hmm. Uh, I did an exception. I had a weekend like once a month and that's it. I read a lot of tons of articles. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've written a list of more than 2,000 words and idioms uh, and I had uh, an English speaking friend to bounce ideas off. Uh, so yeah, I really pushed it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, most of the, the really successful Russian students I've worked with, they, they really systematically like every day improve, the, try and do something to improve their vocabulary. Um, yeah, and, and what, I, what I did is that I followed the so-called bottom-up approach, mm-hmm. which means that you learn in chunks by heart. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And yeah. then they come out of you naturally, both in collocations, red, collocations and chunks. Like, mm-hmm. uh, so if we look at your your um, dedicated many years, yeah, provided yeah. with an opportunity for a promotion, yeah, um, bring innovation, meet the requirements, uh, yeah. So that's how our brains normally learn vocabulary when we're children. We are when we're adults as well, but we don't learn single words. We learn chunks of language. So that's very mm-hmm. good advice as well. So well, it, it does take up a lot of time, but uh, it's, it re- it's really well, well worth it. it definitely, definitely. As, as I said, there's no tricks or tips. or yeah. I, I can't give someone a list of, of words the day before their exam and say, use these in the exam because mm-hmm. you need to learn how to use them, not yeah. not learn them memorize them it's not a memorization test it's a it's a writing test yeah so anna thank you so much for for sharing your essay and and giving Mm -hmm. that advice it it's it's such a privilege to to work with a student like you who's worked very hard and now you can see the results in 8.5 and and that will hopefully lead to much success in in the future for you as well thank you chris for your association and for the course of course uh, I, I will follow the videos and try, I will try to take up some new things. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, yeah, I do enjoy the simplicity of your explanations. And I can, now I can tell everyone that the strategies uh, really work. Mm-hmm. Keep it simple, as I said. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure you're sick of hear, hearing me say keep it simple, but <laughs> anyway. <laughs> well, thank yeah. you, thank you again, Anna, and um, I'm sure everyone will get a lot of benefit um, from this video. And uh, I hope that you have the best of luck in the future. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Bye.